Some viewers have been asking about how to know which outlet begins a run of outlets and which outlet is at the end of a run of outlets. And I'm gonna answer that in this video. So this is a typical representation of a circuit of outlets. You have your breaker box or your panel box. You have a Romex wire that comes to your first outlet box and then another wire will carry on to your second outlet box and then it'll just keep going in a chain depending on how many outlets you have. Those of you who are familiar with the channel know that this is about as good as my animation skills get. And so what you're gonna be looking at is on the wall, you're gonna see your outlet with a cover, with a bunch, you're just gonna see this, whatever, in your living room, kitchen, wherever. And you're trying to figure out which outlet is first and which outlet is last. Where you wanna start is at your breaker box. I'm going to be using my sub panel for this video, but it's exactly the same principle. Hopefully everything in your breaker box is labeled. What you're gonna do is identify the breaker of the circuit that you're trying to analyze. So let's say we're trying to analyze the outlets in a living room. So let's say you come over here, living room outlets. Let's say it's this breaker here. Look for any other rooms that are next to the living room. So you might have say a bathroom or a hallway, kitchen, something like that. And you're gonna find all those breakers that correspond to those areas and turn them off. Each one of these colors is gonna represent an outlet and the colors are gonna be different circuits. And so your kitchen is all on this circuit, which maybe is like circuit one. All your blues are outlets on another circuit and all of your reds are on another circuit. Well, let's say that you're looking at your living room and you're trying to figure out which outlet begins the run and which outlet ends the run. And of course you don't know because everything's hidden behind the walls. But look at what you have here. You actually have an outlet on this side of the wall, which you would think is on the circuit here, just because it's in the living room. But let's say an electrician actually put it on that side just because these are bordering walls and it was just easier to put an outlet on this side. And so that's not even part of the circuit. Well then, you might be analyzing all of the outlets in the room where here in the hallway, they actually ran the Romex from outlet, 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 and it was easier just to make the, to actually install a couple outlets on this side of the wall that are tied into your living room. And so that's what's gonna be most important is figuring out which circuit you wanna analyze and shut off all the other breakers near this area. So let's change gears and let's actually analyze our kitchen outlets first. So if you have outlets in a kitchen, bathroom, garage, or any outdoor outlets, they have to be GFCI protected. And if you don't completely understand how this works, look up my video on GFCI circuits, how to wire GFCI circuits, and this will help you out. But a GFCI circuit is wired in such that if you wire in a GFCI circuit, every outlet after the GFCI outlet, even if they're not GFCI outlets, are GFCI protected. So let's say that you're wondering which outlet begins to run in your kitchen. All you have to do is look for the GFCI outlet and you'll know that that one starts, should start the circuit in the run of outlets. You might have a couple of different GFCI outlets and at that point it's gonna, you're gonna have to uh, determine which breaker powers which one, which GFCI outlet, and then break down the circuit from there. This area of my garage is a good example of what I was just talking about. You have the GFCI outlet over there, and then you have a regular outlet and another regular outlet. But because I'm the one that wired it, I know how this works. I wired it in so that GFCI powers this outlet and powers that outlet. And the way that it's wired ensures that these two outlets are GFCI protected off from that outlet, even though they're not GFCI outlets. So if you were in your kitchen, and you saw a GFCI outlet and two outlets after it, and you isolated the circuit, turning off the breakers to other circuits, and you made sure that that GFCI outlet had power, and then these two had power, you can be pretty sure that that GFCI outlet is powering these non-GFCI outlets. This outlet tester is what I would use to make sure there's power at each outlet. It has these codes to let you know if the outlet is wired correctly or not wired correctly but I'm not gonna use it for that. I'm only gonna use it just to see if there's power at the outlet. So I like the idea of using this instead of a non-contact voltage detector because you might have this tester 
and then maybe it's not working correctly. And so maybe you'll get a good reading, maybe you won't. Where here, if these lights light up, you know there's power at this outlet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my tester and plug it into an outlet in the living room. And then what I'm gonna do is turn off the breakers to everything that's around it that has nothing to do with the living room. Then, once I know that I have everything turned off, then what I can do is go around to each outlet. This one's hot, this one's hot, this one's hot, this one, this one. All of a sudden I get to this one and it's not lit up. But let's say that I'm more worried about, say, these outlets here. And so I can go ahead and cross this one off the list and say, okay, I don't care about this outlet. Which other ones are hot? So I go back and I check every, you know, I go back and I check all the outlets. Then I'm gonna go to the hallway and check these outlets. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I still want to go to adjacent rooms and make sure that no other outlet's hot, just in case some crazy electrician decided to go through an outlet here or somewhere else because it's convenient. So once you know all the outlets that are on this particular circuit that you're trying to analyze, maybe go mark them with painter's tape or something like that, so you know which outlets you're gonna be analyzing for the next step. And if you are gonna buy one of these, I would suggest getting this one, or one like it, to where you can plug this into a GFCI outlet and hit the button and it will actually trip the GFCI outlet. It will obviously work on regular outlets as well, but this just kind of gives you an added feature. So if you're gonna invest one of these, I would invest in this kind. So maybe it's hard to see, but these two lights are lit up, so I know there's power here. How this works is you hit the button and the lights go out. It trips the GFCI outlet, but then you can reset it and all of a sudden it's hot again. So now that you have a little bit of an idea of how this works, I'm gonna analyze my GFCI outlet just to kind of put it into practice. So let me just start off by saying, it's not a good idea to be sitting here tripping your GFCI outlets all the time, flipping breakers on and off. So don't make this your hobby. Just only do this if you really, if you really have something to do here, if, you're, if there's really something in question. So let's just say this is my kitchen. So I'm gonna take my tester, plug it in, and I see that that has power. So I'm gonna assume that this is beginning a circuit because it's in a kitchen. So what I'll do is go to my panel box, turn off breakers of anything that's in the area, making sure that that still has power. Then what I'll do is go to my next outlet, plug it in, it has power. Next outlet, plug it in, it has power. But then let's say that I keep working my way around and no other outlets have power in the area. So now I'm pretty confident that this is all one circuit. So now if I want to confirm that these outlets are GFCI protected, that this is all on the same circuit, what I can do is take my tester, plug it into the outlet, and I just trip that GFCI, which means this outlet is GFCI protected on, or from this outlet. Okay, go down to my next outlet, same thing. Plug it in, hit the button. I'm not gonna keep tripping it, but it'll trip as well. So now I know that those two outlets are not only powered by that GFCI outlet, but that they're also GFCI protected. So scenario two, let's go back to our living room. So I want to figure out which outlets are hot in the living room. So for this, it would actually be good to have a little bit of help. So this is my friend Roscoe, he's gonna be helping me out today. And how this is gonna work is he's going to stand up here at the panel box, and as I'm going around checking outlets, he's going to be turning off breakers and confirming that everything in the area is off and only the circuit in question is live. So the way this works, Ross goes up to the panel box, he shuts off the kitchen breakers, shuts off the bedroom breakers. And then I'm going around and any outlets that border the living room, I'm gonna test to make sure they have power or they don't have power. So I go in the kitchen because I know this is close. These outlets don't have power. Then I go and check this outlet. This one doesn't have power. Then I go check this outlet. This has power. So now I go around. All these continue to have power. But then I remember, hey wait, there's also outlets over here. So then I check the outlet here, has power. Outlet here has power. So now I've tested all the outlets that border this area 
and I've marked each one of these outlets because these are the ones that are still hot. Since I don't have a GFCI outlet that's gonna be powering other outlets because it's a living room, then that isn't going to help me. So that, that approach isn't gonna work. But what I can do is figure out which one of these outlets are at the end of the circuit. So I know there's a lot more outlets on my other demonstration, but let's just say in our living room and in the hallway, we take off all of the covers. So we start taking off the covers to all of the outlets of the circuit that is hot. And when we look in the back of the box, we see a bunch of outlets that have two wires coming into them. And then we get to an outlet that only has one Romex wire going into it. We know that this has to be the end of the run because if you look at how these outlet circuits are set up, one wire is continuing on to another outlet, to another outlet, to another outlet, but eventually one is gonna be by itself. It's only gonna have one wire and not gonna power anything else. That's how you know that's the end outlet. So now let's say that end outlet that I just showed you, let's say it's this outlet right here. And let's say somewhere over here is the panel box. So hopefully the electricians were using common sense and ran the wire the shortest distance to get over to this circuit. So then what you can do is start working your way back and figure out which one of these outlets begins the circuit. So at this point, Roscoe has turned the breaker off. I've went and I've taken outlets out of each outlet box and they're just hanging here. I apologize, I got a little ahead of myself. If you have found the outlet on the end, you don't have to take it out of the box. And so actually all these wires are still inside the box. So this outlet's here because you only see one Romex wire, you know that the, that, that is the end of the run. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to disconnect the black wires. So now I just have my black wires sitting here. Those are the hot wires. Separate them a little ways. If you want, you can wire nut them, whatever you feel safe with. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your non-contact voltage detector and then I'm gonna tell Roscoe to go ahead and turn the breaker on. So now he flips the breaker on. Well, because these two wires are no longer connected and they're not powering the outlet, one of these wires is gonna be hot, one of these wires is gonna be dead. Keep in mind, I didn't disconnect anything else here. And so let's say that I test this wire and this is hot, but then I test this wire and it's dead. So then what I can do is I can go to the next outlet up and see which one of these are live, which one of these are dead. When I figure out, okay, this one's live and this one's live, but this one's dead, then I know that this wire has to be coming back this way and the circuit's dead that way. So now what I'm gonna do is have Roscoe turn the breaker back off so all this is dead. And I'm gonna mark this because I know that this one is the hot wire. Then I'm gonna come back to this outlet, to the next one, and I'm gonna disconnect the black wires here. Roscoe's gonna turn the breaker back on. All of a sudden I don't have power here, but I have power here. And then I come back here, neither one of these have power. So now I know that this must have broken the circuit back over here, so now there's no power going back this way. Don't connect any of these back up. Just let these hang here, and like I said, wire nut them or whatever when the power's off, so you, if you feel safer, however, this is gonna make you feel safe, but you're gonna keep going back. Eventually, you're gonna get to a point to where you have tested all of the outlets that were on your list that you put the painter's tape on, so now you've got all the way around, you've made it back to the last outlet that has power on that circuit. You know that that has to be the first outlet on the run. So just to throw this out here as well, I've just kind of assumed that one outlet is gonna end a run. But let's say that your panel box is over here, the electrician actually ran the power over to, let's say this outlet here. So now you, what you have is you have one Romex wire coming in, you have one Romex going this way, and one Romex wire going this way. So now you actually have three wires in the box. So let's say that these are all the outlets that were hot, and you've removed the covers on all of these, and you see three wires, two wires, two wires, two wires, one wire, two wires, one wire. Then you can just bet that either one of these, you don't need to tamper with them because these are the end of the run. So all the, all the electricity has to be fed from one of these other outlets. If you see one with three wires, it's a good chance that that is where they brought in a hot wire and split it off. So 
If you're trying to analyze the circuit, you may not have to go through any of this. You may be able just to pull off the covers, see one wire, one wire, two wires, two wires, two wires, three wires. And so this would be a good starting point to at least say, okay, if this one has three wires and each one of these only have two, and these are my outlets that are hot, there's a good chance that this one begins the run and it branches off and comes out either way. So you may not have to go through a lot of this nonsense if you almost just kind of intuitively guess kind of what they did. So I hope this video answered some of those questions. Just keep in mind that sitting there constantly tripping breakers and tripping GFC outlets is not a good idea. Um, this should just be done sparingly. So if there's some reason why you actually need to figure out which outlets first, which outlets last, and kind of what's going on with your circuit, um, go ahead and proceed then. But otherwise, I'd probably just leave it alone if it's not necessary. Just kind of keep some of these tips in mind with the beginning GFCI outlet, and then one wire in a box would end an outlet, and three wires coming in might indicate that it's gonna branch off, that outlets are gonna branch off and go somewhere else. So I hope this video helps answer some of those questions. Thank you to Roscoe. So grateful for everyone to support our channel. Thanks for watching.